We use them to turn the channel, to direct our toys, to unlock our cars, and play our video games. It's a device that has made so many tedious actions obsolete, and it fits neatly in our hands. This is the history of the remote control. Our first recorded example of remotely controlling a device comes when inventor Oliver Logue used a mirror galvanometer to move a beam of light. Building on that concept, on December 12, 1896, Guglielmo Marconi and William Priest wirelessly rung a bell from a sizable distance. Even the legendary Nikola Tesla toyed with the concept of remote control when he filed a patent in 1898 for a device that he used as demonstration to control a boat during an exhibit at Madison Square Garden. A Spanish civil engineer by the name of Leonardo Torres Quevedo advanced the principles of remote control technology and also demonstrated his work by wirelessly guiding a boat to shore. The first remote control for consumer devices came in the late 1930s when the Philco Radio Company used a battery-operated, low-frequency radio transmitter to control its high-end radio models. So as television grew in popularity, the need to change the channels without getting up from the couch made the pairing of the TV and the remote control inevitable. Zenith Radio Corporation introduced the Lazy Bones remote control in 1950, but this device was connected by a wire. In 1955, Eugene Polly experimented with the Flashmatic, a device that used beams of light for control. Unfortunately, light from other sources affected the device's performance and the Flashmatic fizzled. Did your parents or grandparents ever refer to the remote control as the clicker? There's a good reason why. In 1956, Robert Adler developed the Zenith Space Command, a remote that worked off the principle of ultrasound. When buttons on the device were pressed, a clicking sound followed. Although the remote worked better than its predecessors, sounds such as tones from xylophones would interfere with the device and change the channel on the viewer. In the 1980s, the use of infrared to communicate remotely between devices became more popular due to the work of engineer Paul Hrivnak. His device remotely controlled a cable box and sold for around $190. With the infrared method working so well, many devices such as VCRs and stereos turned to remote operations. Universal remotes became necessary for controlling racks and racks of audio and video equipment. Nowadays, the use of Bluetooth technology and Wi-Fi to communicate between smartphones and other devices makes remote operating things easier than ever. We can turn on and off lights in our home from around the world because of our modern technology. And remote control applications work in space exploration and military tech also. NASA sends their probes into deep space while controlling them comfortably from the Earth, and the Air Force can operate pilotless airplanes anywhere on the globe. So the next time you need to dig through the couch cushions to find the remote to change the channel, just remember how far the remote control has come and how amazing that little device really is. <laughs>